poster for a, a bar called The Cafe, and it's like all over the Castro. I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, so shocked by this like naked boy bent over with his like ass up in the air that shows like everything. And it's just, I don't know, I just remember being like really shocked by it. And like, my friend was like, whatever, that's freedom. And I was just like, that's freedom? Jeez, I mean, I don't mind it because the boy was really cute, of course, but it just kind of made me a little uncomfortable. Uh, my next piece is called uh, A Stick, A Box, A Piece of String, and a Twinkie. Oh, and by the way, the metro system in the Bay Area, y'all should visit, by the way. Come to the Queer Open Mic. We do it every fourth Friday. Yeah. We're, we're always packed. It's like all kind of performers. Uh, we've had Reggie feature there. It's a really great place next time you're in town. I'll buy you a drink. Um, so the metro system in the Bay Area is called BART, just so you know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> when I ride BART, I wish I had a rose for every beautiful man. I see you waiting for a bar train. I wish I had someplace wonderful for all of them to go. Like my bed. <laughs> and my penis. <laughs> I have a staring problem. And I'm really bad at pretending I'm not staring at beautiful men. If you are a beautiful man and I have stared at you, please forgive. And give a guy a break! I'm weak and single and my eyes wonder like my mind and my heart and my penis. <laughs> but don't worry, I am harmless. Look, but don't touch and one respectful homosexual and my hands stay safely at my sides. They're a little bit anxious. It's been a while since anyone has held them. So recently they've held on to a lot of beer <laughs> and pizza and beer and donuts and yes, my penis. <laughs> if you think you're a beautiful man and wonder why I haven't stared at you, maybe you're not that beautiful. <laughs> hey, mothers lie to their children all the time. Some nights it seems like I find myself riding bar trains surrounded by beautiful men who all want to sit next to me but never talk to me and I never know what to say. Words don't seem to work on them, neither do flowers or songs. One thing I learned from my last escapade with a beautiful man is that paintings and poems and dreams can't save someone who doesn't love you. So I've kind of given up on finding love. Right now I would just settle for not walking home alone. How does one trap a beautiful man? Really? Capturing fire, I'd like to know. How does one trap a beautiful man? Because I have tried everything. Recently I resorted to using a box, a string, a piece of stick, and a Twinkie. <laughs> but so far I've only caught fat cats. And small children. Both of which I want nothing to do with. And nowhere near my penis. It's very hard to sleep knowing that somewhere in San Francisco, a man sleeps in a bed he used to share with you. But never said I love you. Fuck it, I don't care, I love him. I loved him with my eyes and with my words and with my heart and with my hands. And yes, with my penis until it all fell apart and I ended up riding on bar trains by myself, surrounded by beautiful men who all have somewhere to go as I walk them alone. So please forgive me when I stare at you, beautiful men. I mean no harm. Say hi. Make a friend. I might write you a poem. Um, I used to be an actor, studied acting for four years, then I tried being an actor for, well, I was an actor for five years in San Francisco, and I just got really, really tired of doing Shakespeare. <laughs> no offense to the master, but this one is called Rest in Peace, Mr. Shakespeare. <laughs> Stop raping his work over and over again? Every three minutes, somewhere in the US, there is a Shakespeare play done badly. <laughs> and every three of those, there are five set in the future, four set in the past, World War II, Midsummer Night's Dream, Hamlet on the Moon. And through all of those, half of the audience spaced out, dozed off, each with its front row of senior citizens drooling and dreaming in their seats. White people, 
Please let Mr. Shakespeare have some peace after 392 years. No matter how hard, hard you beat it, white folks, I think the horse is dead. We get it! We get it, folks! Mr. Shakespeare was the best! Oh, fuck, I'm sorry, I might never work in this town again. I mean, he is the best. Shh, shh, it's okay. He is the best. But after all this time, he needs a little R&R. &R, a little R.I.P. If you make it the lesbian hip-hop version of Macbeth, it's still going to suck. And there is the rub. He himself, if he were alive, would be on his knees. Streets pour Starbucks for tools and ties. Poets put their prose away and rhymes get lost to notebooks and journals and diaries put away. Cause you'll never be as good as an old dead white dude is something writers have heard all of their lives. More than 60% of theater in America is Shakespeare. And we don't even do all 37 plays on a loop. Mr. Shakespeare never went to Spain or Africa or China. He only mentions my country Mexico once in his plays. There's a Jew and a Moor. Maybe one or two gays, tons of fairies, but Jews and Moors walk every part of the earth freely now, share meals, intermarry, buy hot dogs together, and for some inexplicable reason, regularly go see Shakespeare shows. Gays don't hide in the shadows anymore. Fairies, black men, and Jews all carry iPods and dance to music Mr. Shakespeare would have never dreamed of. Men and women die in explosions on planes and flash floods. Are no longer fools for love. There is a realm. A realm where the minds of future poets and playwrights slumber. William flies above them, pouring inspiration, good thoughts, and encouragement onto the uncultivated fields. Literary talent that, like him, could tap right into the human heart, or even deeper, to help us face the questions of the universe. Let our new writers write the lines of our times. Let the poets write the songs for our existence, our celebrations, our tragedies, our plight. Explore the questions of life, of the, of the new ways we move, of the new ways we love. For cultures, races, and languages may disappear, mix and blend into new ones, but as long as we speak, there will be poets and writers and dreams. So white people, please, please do not let the poet cry himself to sleep. Let Mr. Shakespeare rest in peace, and let the new playwrights and poets make fire on the stage, remind us that we are human, and that even though this new sick world is really fucked up, we still have some sort of concept of love. So grab your motherfucking notebooks, everyone. Everyone, get to work. Mm.